Welcome to the video tutorial for how to make a simple 3D keyring in Google SketchUp that we can send to the UP 3D printer. What we're going to do is we're going to start off by opening Google SketchUp. You'll get the little um, opening screen here. Now it's important that you choose your template first. So select choose template and you'll find this option here product design and woodworking in millimeters. When you've selected that, click start using SketchUp. Now once this is loaded up, we've got a few things. We'll just close this styles window because we won't need it. We've got a few options. We've got a select tool here. We've got the line drawing tool, which we'll use, rectangle, circle. I don't think we'll need arc, but we might use that one yet. Racer, tape measure, paint bucket, the push pull extrude tool, the move tool, rotate, offset, and then we've got some view buttons. We've got this one here which allows us to orbit and move around to look at our image. Pan lets us pick it up and drag it. Zoom can zoom in and out. And this is a handy button. This is zoom extents. This will zoom in as far as it can without allowing us um, to miss any of the drawing. It won't cut anything off. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rotate our views. So we want to look straight down on our drawing, our drawing space. And before we go too far, you'll see we've got some axis here on the screen. We've got a blue line which goes straight up and down. Red line goes from left to right. And the green line goes from front to back. So we're going to go up to camera, standard views. We're going to change our view to the top. So you'll now notice that we can see our red left to right line axis and our green front to back and you can't see the blue because it's going straight up and down. I'll just show you by grabbing the orbit tool if we orbit it around well then you can see that blue line there. So I'm going to go back to camera, standard views and I'm going to look at it from the top. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle now that I've got my workspace set up. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm going to start my rectangle here in the origin. So I'm going to click once and I'm going to drag it out to make a rectangle of any size. Now you'll see that there's some dimensions in the box on the bottom right hand side. I'm going to enter some numbers in there using the keypad. 100, 40. So my rectangle will be um, 100 millimeters from left to right and 40 millimeters from top to bottom. So once I've entered that, I can press enter, but you'll notice that it's shrunk. That's because I was working in a larger space. So if I now click on the zoom extents tool, I can zoom in all the way in. I can see it and it hasn't cut anything off. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tape measure tool to draw a five millimeter border on the top and bottom. So I've clicked once, I've dragged down. Instead of trying to find five millimeters using a guesstimate, I'm going to enter five and press enter. I'll do the same thing now from the bottom. Now I'm going to want to do it a little bit further from each end. I'm going to use 20 millimeters from each end, just like so. This is going to help create the 3D border. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the arc tool. I'm going to click on the intersection of the 20 millimeter line and the top of the rectangle, the 20 millimeter line and the bottom of the rectangle, and drag it out so it touches the edge. It's going to give us a half circle. And we'll do that from both sides. Now 
Now we want to move and put a half circle now on the inside and it's going to automatically know that we want to do another half circle. So from the bottom and top of our five millimeter border lines, we'll find the half circle. Make sure it's not a point or a face. Make sure you find that half circle point. And now we should have um, the beginnings of our five millimeter borders. Now what we'll do is we're going to use the line tool to join the two small internal arcs together. Like so. Oops, we've accidentally zoomed out. Now you see that it wants to continue drawing the line. To get rid of that line, I'm just going to press escape on the keypad. Draw another line. There we go. So now we've got our border. So what we'll do now is we'll grab the eraser tool and we're going to erase the corners, which will leave us with the oval. And we'll also get rid of our 5mm and 20mm guidelines that we made with the tape measure. So there we go. And now we're going to erase the middle. I'll move the eraser tool anywhere in the middle. I'm going to right click until it's all filled with the dots and click erase. Now with the orbit tool I can rotate and you'll notice that we've now got a border. The problem with that border is that it's flat. We want to make that into a 3D border. So once I've moved it to somewhere I can see it, I'll grab the push pull tool, click on the border, drag it up anywhere will do. I'm using the keypad, I'll press 5 and enter. And now I've got my 3D border. Now we'll zoom out a little bit, I think. Now it's time to put the unique initials in the middle. And you can choose any initials um, or characters or numbers, I guess, as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to Tools. And we're going to select the 3D Text option. And we'll click in there to start off. Here we go. Now I'm going to put my initials in. I'm going to separate them by space just to spread them out a little. And now we can select a font that we think that looks good. If you're going to 3D print this key ring, it's probably best to pick a text that's fairly thick and doesn't have a lot of thin skinny lines because that might make it that might make it difficult. Okay, so I'll have a look, find a font. It might be a bit big with a space in the middle. Let's play with that. So we extruded our border 5 millimeters. So we need to change this setting here to 5. And the gap in the middle of our key ring is 30 millimeters. So I'll need to change that as well. And I'm going to align it in the center. And I'm going to click place. So now here we go, I've got some text, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it over here to the side somewhere. Now, here comes the tricky bit. I'm going to pick my move tool and I want to find the midpoint of the component. I'm going to click and drag it until I find the edge, preferably the midpoint. And I'm going to drop it on there. So now, if we rotate and have a look, Hopefully, when we zoom in, we don't have any gaps. Now, if you do have a gap, like the gap we have here, what we'll need to do is we'll need to resize it a little. Now, to do that, we select our text, 
and press the S tool, which is the scale tool. So now I can drag my text out until it touches the midpoint or it touches the edge. Now, if we zoom in and have a look, it's important to check this, otherwise, the 3D printer will um, print the gap there and that'll be a problem for you. So we've still got a gap there. We'll press the S button again so we'll scale it. Find the handles. And now we can drag it out. Now it's okay that it's overlapped there. The 3D printer will just print that and that will be fine. So there we go. What you could probably do is, let's see if this works. Nope. I wouldn't delete that. To bring it back, we'll go edit, undo, and we'll just leave that overlapping line. That should be fine. Now there's our key ring, pretty much finished. What you can do to make it look interesting is that you can go and grab the paint bucket tool, and you can select a color. And we can paint it. I might try orange. Now, if I click on this, it'll only paint one section. Now, I want to paint everything. So, to paint it, I'm going to select all of it. And now, I'm going to right click on the object. And I'm going to find the make a group option and group it all together. So now hopefully when I'm going to paint it, it's all painted. Grouping it's really important because when you go to export your file, you have to have it grouped as one thing. Now I can't export this um, for a 3D printer on this version of Google SketchUp because I haven't. Um, I haven't added a STL file exporter to it, but that's something that I can do um, on a unlocked Pro version, where I can actually um, install a plugin to export to an STL, and then it's ready to 3D print. So I'll just finally rotate around my keyring, make sure there's no gaps, no white bits left. But that'll be ready to experiment with on a 3D printer. Its size is quite large, so what I might do is I might scale that down when I get it onto the 3D printer. Hope you've enjoyed drawing a simple keyring in Google SketchUp, and um, I find, hope you find it really rewarding 3D printing it. Don't forget to save your work.